In today's episode, we are going to be diving deep into the Irish accent. Now, I've already covered the Northern Irish accent with my friend Joel, but there isn't just one version of the Irish accent. There's many different versions, and we are today joined by an expert, a lovely English teacher from Dublin, and her name is Jo. Hello, Jo. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you, and thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So, I've already mentioned there's many different versions of the Irish accent. It, depending on where you are in Ireland, you're going to hear a slightly different accent, aren't you? That's true. And so, could you talk us through some of the common features of your accent and Irish accents in general? Of course. Uh, I think that one of the funny things is when people first meet me, they always try to get me to say 33 and a third because they want me to say 33 and a third and third is excrement. So <laughs> definitely one of the most prominent features of the Irish accent is that we don't say the TH sound like the or the M sound. We normally just say like it or the sound. And so in Irish and in your accent, you're changing that TH, the voiceless th and the voiced th for a t and a d sound, a t and a d sound, right? Yeah, it's easier. And actually, I think I learned really how to say it when I began teaching English. So to teach it properly, I had to learn how to say it, but it doesn't mean that I always follow the rule. <laughs> how would you say this is my mother then um well this is my mother is how i would say it but uh also if i'm speaking to friends or family i might say this is my mother okay so there's another interesting feature of the irish accent and that's that it's rhotic mm. so you would say mother and really push into that r sound at the end wouldn't you yeah correct you did a good imitation mother yeah, there's definitely an or at the end. But in Ireland, we call ours ors. So how would you say hair, as in, I love your hair? Uh, hair. I love your hair. Right. It's true. I love your hair. Anna. <laughs> Thank you. I love your hair, too. You've done Thank it very you. nicely. Thank you. And um, what about the word poor, to have no money, to be poor? I would say poor nice yeah. yeah nice i actually mm -hmm. covered it in the northern irish accent video with joel i think we looked at the words poor to have no money poor to pour water or to pour liquid the poor of an animal he he said them could you do that for me so poor mm -hmm. poor and animal poor sure so i would say poor i have no money poor and paw. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So they are different, all of them different. Yeah, all very different. Yeah, m mine's more or, so we don't say that R sound at all. It's just this or vowel. Like my tongue is down, there's lots of space inside my mouth, or. And this is actually the sound that so many of my students struggle with, this vowel or. But for you guys, much easier, or, or. Yeah, exactly, because or. often that or sound is followed by an or the letter or r the letter r exactly mm -hmm. in english and i have a rhotic accent so i add that or on so it's i think it's kind of easier yeah absolutely so what other features can you share with us about the irish accent i always think that the irish accent is sort of a cross between a british and an american accent I think that the American accent is heavily influenced by the Irish one. Like when we say little, pretty, bit, sometimes we drop the T like with British accents and sometimes we have a very, very soft T like Americans. So I might say I'm pretty good. That's the soft T in pretty. Or I might say give a little bit of that. And there's also something funny that you guys do sometimes with the T at the ends of words. Do you want to share that oh, feature? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I think this is one of the dead giveaways of uh, an Irish accent. Uh, we sometimes will say right, 
instead of saying the word right, you you will hear people saying right. Right. It's very common. Mm -hmm. like yeah. A, it's like a S H, like the shower. Shh. Right. At the end of the word. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard this um, in a in some versions of a Scouse accent, but Liverpool and Irish actually have a lot of overlapping features. Mm -hmm. I think it's it makes true. sense. Yeah, I think that Liverpool is the closest city to Dublin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of um, people from Dublin went to Liverpool in search of work like 50 yeah. years ago, maybe a little bit more now. So I think, yeah, the Scouse accent is influenced by the Irish accent too. You also find that um, we have that, like the, instead of saying the T, we'll say the sh sound in the middle of words. So we say like, right, right, start, but people may also say starting or right. getting. Right. Like he'll be getting here around five. Okay, so that that was an interesting sentence, and there's a few other things there we can discuss. So you dropped the G, so we didn't have an NG and N mm sound at the end there. You changed N mm for N. Mm. So you said um, rather than getting, you said getting, getting, get but in. with your SH. Get, get I in. can't say it. Geshen? Geshen? Geshen. Yeah, it's it's strange. It doesn't sound like the word getting, but it's getting. If, and when you say it quickly in the middle of a sentence, that's perfectly normal for an Irish person, especially someone from Dublin. Geshen. So say the sentence, he'll be getting here around five once again, please. Um, he'll be getting here around five. Fantastic. So there's another little piece of this sentence that is probably my favourite aspect of an Irish accent, which is the... the <laughs> oi oi sound that yeah. you that you used when you said the number five so I think of it as a, a the diphthong I I like the eyes that I used to see but you make it much more rounded mm -hmm. it's more like oi like yeah, oi what are you doing yeah exactly like it's not so pronounced as like oi foiv but sometimes it can be, but usually it's like a softer oi, like five, five. And we do it with um, other words as well, like like. Uh, and people from Ireland often say like at the end of sentences. I'm not sure, but if you watch any interview with Saoirse Ronan, the actress, you'll hear her saying it like. It's almost like, like um, something we do when we're nervous or just to show that the sentence is finished like. <laughs> Right, like, like, yeah. is that is that right? That's it. That's it. Yeah, good. Very Fantastic. good. Yeah, that's another way to distinguish the Irish accent for sure. Fantastic. And another thing I've noticed uh, Irish people saying is film, film. Mm -hmm. Whereas we say, or I say, film, film. Have you seen the new Pixar film, for example? Are there any other words that you that you treat in this way? So you've got film. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah, else? We'll, we'll sometimes add a vowel sound to the word girl, so it becomes girl. I think, girl. yeah, girl. Also, um, see if you can tell me what word this is. Uh, Dowen. Down? Dowen. Yeah. Yeah, to go down. Exactly. Very good. To go okay. down to the town. <laughs> yes. Oh, Tawan, we might also say Tawan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, alone. Alone. Yeah. Yeah. That was harder. I had to think about that one for a second. <laughs> what about phone? I'm assuming phone. Yes. Good. Fantastic. And uh, I have one more for you. Uh, what do you think time means? Time. What time is it? Yeah. Perfect. And would you do that every time you say these words or is it only um, occasionally? Uh, occasionally it's very marked. Uh, but yeah, my I is not, it's not like the AI sound like you said, that, that phoneme, tie, I'm. That, 
I have to open my mouth really wide to say that. That sounds strange. I wouldn't yeah. say, what time is it? I'd say, what time is it? What time is it? Yeah. What time is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's when I'm teaching the received pronunciation uh, lessons, I'm often referring to that sense of having marbles in your mouth. You know, it's that very old. I think they actually used to do that in the old days when teaching elocution. I think they used to make people practice with physical marbles in their mouth which I think is a terrible choking hazard if if nothing else that sounds Probably dangerous. Bad for your teeth. yeah um but I did used to when teaching face to face sometimes ask my students to use what's called a, like a bone prop which is a little tiny um piece of plastic that would hold your teeth apart um just to start to open the jaw more to allow more space in the mouth so the rp accent definitely is about having more space mm -hmm. it doesn't feel natural to me maybe i need a, a bone prop as well <laughs> so we've got toy and uh film film and mm -hmm. you sound I irish now <laughs> So in general, I think I can always tell an Irish accent because of the vowel sounds. They're softer, they're sometimes shorter, like I'd say calm, but you'd say calm. Calm. Very short. Nice and short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah, I think and, uh, people in Lancashire say that too, don't they? Oh, I'm thinking, thinking of my Lancashire accent now. Um, <laughs> Right, well, I'm up here now and I'm calm. No, actually, Lancashire would still say calm. It'd still be long, calm. It's but there long, are but not as long, is it? There are shorter vowels. I know what you're referring to, this switch between R and A, uh, and it's the same for American English. They have the shorter vowel more often. Um, but it's things like bath and bath, past and past, last mm. and last. Ah, uh, yeah, I would always say past, last. Past. Yes. Like but that. what you're saying is for in other instances where you, you would have a, an, a long R vowel, you would probably treat it in a, in a shorter way. You'd have it as a like calm rather than calm. Um, what about the, the palm of your hand would say palm? Exactly. That's the palm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the subject of vowels, there is a short vowel that I think of as being the very posh RP vowel, which is the uh sound. And the reason I think of it as being the RP posh vowel is because we we don't have this in Northern English. Uh, naturally, I'm a Lancashire girl, and we didn't ever say bus, love, cup. We'd say boss, love, cup. But what exactly. about you guys? Do you say boss? That's it. That's the accent in Dublin too. Bus, cup. Yeah. Uh, this uh, sound was one that I really had to learn. I didn't just have to perfect it like with the other ng and, th and th sounds that I perfected when I started teaching English, but I really had to learn this one. And I don't think I can do it really well because it's kind of unnatural for me as well. Yeah. Bus. And I, I have to do this. I can't just do it normally. I have to like make a strange face when I say it as well. <laughs> right. We've covered quite a lot, but I can't end this interview without asking you how you pronounce the word nothing. 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 I love nothing. that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So nothing. 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 Is that every single time you say the word or just when it stands alone? every single time when I say the word it's really hard for me to say nothing because it has so many of the features of the Irish accent it has the uh, the th, that becomes it and then the n sound at the end instead of in nothing fantastic so uh, is I that the same for something it is something something I think that's very difficult for especially learners, but even people who come to Ireland as uh, like first language speakers to understand. Yeah, something becomes something. Something. <laughs> How about anything? Um, Would that become anything with a ting rather than a thing? 
you know, that's can... very logical, but anything becomes atom. A what? <laughs> atom. Atom. Yeah, do you want atom at the shop? Wow. Atom. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Are there any others that I can think of? So you've got nothing, something, anything. What about everything? How do you treat that? Everything. everything. Okay, so that one's... That was more close to, yeah. That one's Fantastic. closer. <laughs> yeah, I, I find accents absolutely fascinating. Would you say that your accent's very different to your um, parents, grandparents? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I haven't lived in Ireland for over a decade. So my accent is definitely more neutral than it used to be. When I go home, when I'm around my family, it comes back, you know, um, or just sometimes if I'm very relaxed, I'm not sure. It's, it's like I didn't try to change my accent. It just changed because I wanted to be understood because I teach English for a living and um, I, you can't go around the world saying at and, and expect to be understood. So, yeah, we we naturally try to fit in. We we do. It's the same. My northern accent comes back when I'm in the north or surrounded by other northerners. It's just this natural want. We're very social creatures. We want to fit in with our with our peers and the people we're surrounded by. Um, I often hear people when they're discussing Irish accents if they're not Irish going ah what's the crack yeah is that something and and for my viewers and listeners what's the crack is supposed to be like what's going on what's happening how are you is that kind of question and crack isn't spelled as you would expect it c-r-a-c-k it's spelled c-r-a-i-c that's right mm -hmm. so is that actually something that Irish people say well, I think that what's the crack is more associated with Northern Ireland. I wouldn't ask what's the crack, but I would use the word crack in a different context, but it has the same meaning and it means fun because that's actually an Irish word, like oh. a Gaelic word. Um, so I would say, he, oh, he's no crack. Like he's, he's no not, crack. Yeah. Wow, I love fun. that. Or you're some crack. Anna, do you know you're some crack? I really <laughs> had fun. Uh, having this conversation with you brilliant brilliant <laughs> when you're a fun crack too is it like that fun is crack oh fun is crack so you're so you're some crack oh you're some crack okay yeah. <laughs> I love that you are some crack brilliant <laughs> brilliant and the last one which is the very very typical saying that people um consider to be what all the Irish say in the morning which is Top of the morning to you. Uh, I think only in bad Hollywood films. Yeah, okay. We don't really say that, no. <laughs> okay, so if any of you listening bump into someone from Ireland, probably best not to say top of the morning to you. No, no, say story. Story? Yeah, like what's the story, but you just say story. Oh, okay, yeah. story. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Thanks to Joe, we've gained some really interesting insights into the Irish accent. Now, if you're an ESL student, you're learning English, then pronunciation should be quite high on your priority list. And having some insight into your own pronunciation, your own accent, the sounds that you naturally use and the sounds of your target language then that can be a game changer. But how do you gain that insight? Well, that's where I'm here to help. You can have a pronunciation assessment where I break down all the sounds of RP, the British English accent, and measure you against those sounds. And I can give you full detailed feedback and tell you exactly where you need to focus your pronunciation practice and this method speeds up your improvement. Lots of students thoroughly enjoy the assessment process, and I'm sure you would too. To find out more about my pronunciation assessment or my pronunciation course, I'll put the links down in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care and goodbye.